Okay. So I'll try to uh, wrap things up a bit. This is the first such series or series of videos that I ever do, and I didn't do any second takes on them. I basically started the first part, and I just assumed I'll move on to the next logical uh, uh, topic. Uh, and I had to slice it down as I explained at the start for technical reasons. I have some issue with my software. If I make the video too long, I could lose some data. Uh, and I have lost some data, and you can look back and see that. Uh, I'll try and uh, recall what I did in the previous part, kind of summarize that, and try and make some constructive suggestions for a, any person who's developing software. It doesn't have to be a free software developer, it can be a proprietary software developer as well. Uh, it's more of a, a class war thing, it's not really a, a, a paradigm war or a, an ideological war between uh, free and open source software and then you know, proprietary software. On the other hand, it's mostly the big companies versus the small companies. Uh, and any uh, false dichotomy you see, like, you know, it's between those who don't respect patents and between those who just like want everything for free, that's, that's just not the case, that's just not the real dilemma now. Uh, the thing about software patents, you've probably read many things that explain why software patents should be should not be granted. Uh, um, I probably should do a whole series of videos about that because I couldn't possibly uh, explain this now in a couple of minutes, not not compellingly enough. Uh, so I think uh, the whole series basically began with me trying to speak about the. Uh, my, the way I was introduced to patents, the way I realized they were bad, having thought that patents were just this thing to be taken for granted, you know, people surely know how to run the system, I just realized, no, we, we have to dissent against that. Especially in the States where it's just very commonplace to, to patent algorithms, absolutely hilarious things. Uh, and it's harming their economy, and it's harming our economy too, because, because these things have been applied internationally with the ITC, with the uh, with these uh, internationalized type of entities that try to enforce the US law in other countries too. Uh, what we need to do is to explain to people why software patents are bad. Uh, we have to start with software patents because it's more conformist to uh, stick to this one issue and it's really easy to persuade people software patents don't make sense. It did, obviously did not used to exist back when the patent system was created. So to justify their inclusion is, is just ridiculous and, and the way it was done is, is also a kind of a backdoor thing and I'll, I'll try and explain it in a future show. Uh, the thing I do suggest to people, try to explain to friends what happens now when it comes to the costs of the uh, of the phones that they use or the computers they use because of software patents. I'm not talking about hardware patents and the hard drives and the magnets and everything else, you know, that's, that's a whole different story. Uh, but the, the operating system, especially things like Linux, shouldn't be uh, a cash cow for Microsoft. We need to explain this to people, uh, and we need to encourage them to rethink and to challenge the law when it comes to patents, especially uh, when it comes to software patents. So that's it for now.